G'day everyone, Lauren Cress, the business scientist here. Today we're going to have a quick look at how Sales Navigator works. Now, if you're new to Sales Navigator, if you haven't really used it before, this is a great video to start with. And first off, I'm just going to explain a little bit about where I see Sales Navigator sitting in relation to our marketing funnel. So this is how I kind of put together a marketing funnel for my clients. So we have brand awareness at the top, we have our lead generators, our lead magnets, our lead nurture, and our sales. Now, I wanted to outline that because when it comes to talking about sales navigator and talking about lead generation, often people can be talking about multiple steps within this funnel. Um, but sales navigator actually really plays a great role here in taking people from not knowing who you are to knowing who you are. So our goal is to get people to know who we are. Some other ways that we can do that is through things like referral partners. We can also do that through low ticket purchase items. Um, but in this case, we're looking at Sales Navigator. Now, what I recommend is that you set up Sales Navigator so that you have thought about your different personas. If you want to find out more about uh, empathy mapping and persona development, I'll do a separate video on that and I'll link it uh, in the description below when that's available. Um, but you should already have your empathy map available so you know really well who your personas are. Then we come over to Sales Navigator and you'll land on your homepage, which looks something like this with the search bar at the top. And I'll just take a moment to show you a little bit about some of the key features. So one of the first things you want to check out is your Sales Navigator coach over here. So basically, um, this just gives you a really quick rundown on some of the core features in Sales Navigator. And if you click on learn more, you'll be able to go through each one of those lessons and try out how they all work. It actually has some really cool features like being able to sync your calendar to Sales Navigator, um, being able to take notes on leads and accounts. Um, so I highly recommend starting there when you get into Sales Navigator. And then let's just have a quick look at, um, there's this one key difference you really need to understand, which is the difference between accounts and leads. So accounts is when you're looking at the business level. Um, so you're looking at, for instance, uh, Microsoft would be at the account level, but an employee at Microsoft would be at the lead level. Now, what you want to do, I've actually taken out my uh, list here because I'm about to build some new lists. So I thought it was a good time <laughs> to be talking about this on YouTube. Um, so what we want to do is we want to start with a search. Now, you can start a search um, from up here and you can switch um, when you're actually searching as well. So when I'm working with clients, um, what we'll do is we'll actually start with a search together on their um, their own Sales Navigator platform. It's not done through mine. So like I said, you have lead filters and account filters. So let's say we wanted to, let's start with uh, account filters. So let's say for instance, you know that you want to t target uh, small businesses. So you might wanna start with um, looking at your company headcount. So you could say, oh, I'm not going for people who are self-employed. I'm not going for super small businesses. I'm probably going for the 11 to 50. If you're not sure, maybe you would say, oh, I'll go for the one to 10 as well. You can look at things like how quickly the company headcount has grown. Um, you can look at where they sit in terms of Fortune 50, Fortune 100. Um, you can look at things like how popular they are, how many followers do they have? Now, this is really going to depend on what you've discovered when you've done your empathy mapping and market research. Another really key thing, obviously, is to look at things like where are you searching? So are you going regional or are you going local? So, for instance, you could go the Sydney CBD zip code or postcode, um, as we say in Australia, is 2000. Um, so I could, I could search directly in, into that region. And then you can see my results go down to 18,000. So companies in this region with a headcount of one to 50 
and I've got an 18 thousand results but that's probably not enough information to start really looking for leads so another useful thing obviously is going to be uh, searching for people's industry so let's say for instance you're targeting people who work in the management consulting space Um, you might also say oh well technically that might be under professional training and coaching as well um Maybe you help people who provide different services. So you might say, oh, also financial services. Um, Now you can, if you were targeting a different sort of um, user journey for, let's say, someone in the financial services sector versus someone who is a management consulting uh, firm, you might want to also save those as separate, um, separate lists. So let's have a look at where we've gotten to with this so far, just with those few filters. So basically what that's given us is over 5,000 results. Now, because I'm looking at an account level, I'm not going to be able to filter by things like um, whether I'm connected with the person or not. Um, There's also things like technologies used. So say, for instance, if you were kind of going, oh, like I help people optimize Google Analytics, you might go, oh, okay, well, actually I'm going to see Um, I'm going to filter for people who use Google Analytics because they've already got it and then I'm going to help them with that technology. So you can get pretty granular. Having said all of that, I prefer to use the lead avenue rather than the account avenue. So for the lead avenue, because we haven't done any lead filters, uh, we've kind of got this weird mishmash of basically people who are going to turn up from the filters that um, cross over between account and leads, but you really want to go and do that search again and um, actually redo your filters. Um, So you can either add them in here or you can um, click view all filters. And now you might want to say, okay, well, when I'm targeting individuals, I want them to be first degree connections. I only want to find people who are already connected with me on LinkedIn. Um, You might say, I want people who have um, behaved in certain ways. I want people who have certain titles. I want people with certain years of experience. So really, really powerful in terms of how you can filter. But also keep in mind that if you go too narrow, people don't always keep their LinkedIn profiles perfectly up to date. So if you get too specific you might end up with a leads list that's quite small and it might not necessarily be accurate. So a number like 416 is actually quite nice. It's not too small, but it's not huge either. It's kind of a manageable manageable list. So what we can do then is we can start to look at, is this the kind of right people that I want to be targeting? Does this look like the kind of person that I want to be talking to? Or are these people that I don't feel like would be the right fit? If they don't feel like they're the right fit, then maybe you need to go back and rethink how you're, um, how you're filtering things. You might also say, oh, you know what? I don't want to filter so narrowly. It doesn't really, if, say if you work somewhere, you're like, it doesn't matter how far away someone is. Um, so you might say, okay, instead of doing postcode, I might actually just do um, Australia. And one thing I also, I like to add California as an Australian um, because California has quite a nice, it's big, uh, it has lots of people, but it's also quite a nice time difference um, between uh, California and Australia. So if you're on the east coast of Australia, um, doing business with the west coast of the United States is actually a pretty good, um, a pretty good time difference. So now you can see that we've doubled our results because I've just changed that geography. Um, So we've got 806 results now of people who kind of fit this this industry. And also we've still got that company headcount piece as well. So say you're like, I'm really happy with this search. These are the kinds of people I want to be talking to and approaching. Then what you would do is you come over here and you click save search. Now this search can, will stay updated based on people changing their LinkedIn profile. So you could do, um, uh, you could have alerts on when it's changing weekly. You can also do it daily, uh, monthly or never. So 
as, um, as things change, this will update as well. So let's call this um, Pacific Coast um, Service Businesses um, or Service Professionals. Save search. Now, say, for instance, you're like, oh, wait, hang on. I didn't actually do exactly what I wanted to do. I want to filter that more. What you can do is you can view that save save search and you can adjust it and save it as a new search. So say, for instance, you're like, oh, I actually want them to be an owner or um, a director, let's say. Um, and yeah, that's, that changes my results quite a lot. And we might go, okay, like that's actually what, um, how I want it to look. And then we'd say save search. So just keep in mind that this would have to be saved as a new search and then you can delete the old one. So that's how you start to build your lead searches. When you want to come back into sales navigator and view that you just head over to save searches and then you'll see um, your list there and you can go to saved account searches and again go there as well. Now this, these searches are different to your leads list and your accounts list. So your account leads list and accounts list are people that you've saved into these um, places. So for instance, if I went to this one we just did and I went through and I went, okay, every day I'm going to find 10 people um, that fit for me, I might go, um, okay, let's say this person, this person, this person, I'm just randomly picking them. And I go, okay, those five are people that I want to save to a list. And I'd say save to a list and I would create a leads list. And then I might go, um, let's say I went October targets. Now, you know, five is not enough for an entire month. You might have a date, you might, might do five a day. Um, however you want to organize that, but you can basically, um, start to build that list. So I've, you can see who's been saved within the searches and then you can continue to add people as well. Um, and the same principles apply to accounts. I just prefer not to use that. Um, but that's the other way that you can do that as well. So we've been through home account and leads list. Um, messaging essentially is the same as what you see in LinkedIn, except you have some other things that you can sort of manage through your sales navigator inbox. So for instance, um, you've just got a little bit more control over how to mark things. You can attach things, um, you, but you also can't through sales navigator, you can't do things like, um, uh, let's just pick someone who's already on this list. Um, so you can pick anyone from who you're connected with, but what you can't do is like record a message. So you can only share documents, um, which I find a little bit frustrating. So I prefer to go to LinkedIn messaging for that. And then you can also have people who are helping you to manage Sales Navigator, which you can do through your seat management. So you can have other people who come on as your um, admin to help you with Sales Navigator. So that's it from me for today. We're going to be exploring more about this marketing funnel. So if you're interested in understanding how all of this connects together, uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all my latest videos on marketing for small business. Cheers, guys.